Hi everyone! In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a slab built paint palette. Alright, so of course we're going to start off uh, grabbing a chunk of clay. Um, what you'll see is I actually got twice as much as what we needed, uh, just so you know. But it is good to get a little bit more than what you think, um, especially with slab building. You don't want to not have enough. So uh, here I'm using a uh, mid-fire range clay, a fire stacone six. Um, I don't, I don't, I've never worked with earthenware, so I'm not sure if you could do that with this, but you could definitely do this also with a high fire clay. Um, you may have noticed that I'm using a porcelain, uh, which is a little odd for hand building. Usually it's used for um, like wheel throwing, but I, the one that I have, I think it works really similar to the um, stoneware that I have. I'm not even sure if I noticed a difference between either. They're also like the same color. Um, but I think like definitely uh, stoneware is really good for uh, hand building type things um, if you want to be on the safe side. The next step here, we want to wedge our clay. I'm going to add a little bit of water to the uh, my wedging board just uh, because the clay is a little bit on the drier side. My wedging board is just a piece of wood with um, canvas stapled to it on the back side. Um, I think it's really great for just like working on. Um, and here we're doing a spiral wedge. What we want to do is remove any air bubbles out of the clay, um, but we also want to compress the clay particles um, into like just a more condensed uh, form. I basically just wedge um, based on how much clay I have. Um, so here I have quite a lot, so I'm just, <laughs> I don't know, I just like wedge it until I feel like it's done. Um, sometimes um, you can't really see it in the video, but from where I am wedging it, I can see air bubbles popping as I'm wedging that. And if I do like a couple rounds where I'm, I stop seeing those happen, then it's probably a good sign that you're nearly done wedging. We have our wedged clay and we just want to pat it into an even shape. I would say either a ball or like a cylinder, just so that it is even when we roll it out. I don't know if it's completely necessary, but I just slam it down a couple times. This will help it compress the clay and just give us like a little even shape to work with. Um, I have paint stir sticks here. We're going to grab three for each side and this just makes sure that our when we roll out the clay it won't be any shorter than that because we do want quite a tall slab to start with. So I'm going to grab my rolling pin here. You'll see that it does have little bumpers on it which are really great and I do use those instead of the paint stir sticks but they're a little bit shorter than what we want for um, this paint palette. Um, and then every couple um, passes that we do, we want to flip the clay over and um, rotate it so that we are um, just getting kind of like an even shape. We would generally want a more elongated shape, but because we have so much clay, we're actually going to just roll it out into more of like a, I don't know, <laughs> like a circle, square, whatever. All right, so we're done um, rolling the clay out. <laughs> we have like such a l large thing. Um, so what we want to do is take our rib. I'm going to clean a little bit here. Um, and then we want to run it across the clay um, to get rid of any of those little cracks that you see. But for the most part, what we want to do is compress the clay and make sure that all of the clay particles are going in the right direction that we want them to. Um, this does take a little while and you are going to lose some of that height that you have. Um, so that's good to like plan out ahead of time like how thick you want your slab to be. 
Um, so after I run it across the whole surface, um, I flip it over and do the other side. I just do this a bunch of times. I don't even know like how many times is necessary, but I just really want to make sure that the th whole thing is compressed and it's not going to create any cracks um, afterwards once we're working with the piece or um, in the drying stage or if it, um, once it fires, we don't want it to crack. Here's the other paint palette that I made. Um, I wanted to like take that one and show you guys how to make it basically. So we're just gonna cut out the same shape. Um, what I'm doing here is just making a little buffer. You do not want to get any of the edges of the clay in there just because it's not as compressed. It's not as, um, it's not the same height generally um, from the compression stage. Um, and it's just like, if you do this, you'll see that it, it it's like all weird and wonky on the side. So um, here we're basically just cutting out the shape. Um, it's like big enough for two. So I was like, I don't know, I guess we'll just do another one maybe, we'll see. Okay, so we have our little paint palettes cut out here. Um, Next, I'm going to lay out the little stir sticks and um, we're going to place the paint palettes on top of them so that they can dry. Um, I think this is a great way to do it just because you can get a little bit of airflow under them as well and they dry a little bit more evenly. Um, we want this to be to dry to leather hard stage and right now it's just too malleable to start um, to start carving. All right, so our clay has dried quite a bit. You can see um, it's a little bit stiffer than it was. Um, I have a banding wheel here just because it's a little bit easier to work on, um, but it's not completely necessary to have um, if you are just starting out and you don't have very many tools or anything. Um, obviously you want a couple of trimming tools. Um, you'll see in the video, I have a couple of different sizes. Um, but basically we just want to trim off like a bunch of the excess where, uh, we're starting off with the sides and just smoothing those out and just getting them to the shape that I want them to be in. All right. So I have a little knitting needle here. Um, I actually use these a lot to draw out where I'm gonna, um, where I'm gonna trim or like cut shapes out. Um, they're nice because they have a little bit of a dull point to them. So they're not really, it's not digging in too much into the clay. We're just getting a little bit of a rough shape here for where we're gonna trim the foot out. For certain sized uh, plates, dishes, you want to have a little, um, like, I don't know, you wanna keep a little bit of a foot in the middle um, just in case the clay slumps down when it's fired. I don't know if it's completely necessary with this size, but I just wanted to put it in there just in case. Now I have a smaller trimming tool. Um, we really don't want to take too much out of the bottom just because we want to keep a lot of that depth for the paint palettes on the other side. Um, but we're just going to go through and trim, um, trim a bunch of that clay out right now. All right, we're done trimming, and here's just a close-up of what it looks like. Okay, so before we actually start carving, what I want to do is plan out the shapes that we're going to carve out beforehand. I just have a, um, my little knitting needle tool here, um, just because, like, I think it's, like, nicer. It's not so uh, pointy, and it doesn't, like, cut through the clay, like, so much. Um, but if you do mess up when you're, um, when you're planning out, you can just like get a little piece of clay and just kind of like rub it into the spot that you carved out a little bit too much. Um, another thing I want to note is that the, I do know that the glaze that I have is pretty thick. Um, so I want to make the walls fairly large. 
I don't want to make any too small because I know the glaze is going to fill it in quite a bit and they're going to be smaller than uh, what you see here once it's fully glazed and finished. All right, so we're finally going to get to the carving stage. I have a little um, like loop tool. <laughs> I don't know what these are called. It's just like a trimming tool. Um, and what you want to do is maximize how deep you can get each well, but also be really careful not to make the bottom layer too thin. And you really want to avoid punching through, <laughs> like through the entire palette to the other side. Um, <laughs> that would be really bad. Um, I don't know if, it, if how easy that would be to like fix. I don't think it would be very easy. Um, so um, yeah, so basically I'm just carving out all the wells, just really trying to be careful um, about how, um, how deep they are. You can kind of pinch it like uh, inside one of the wells and then to the backside and kind of like get an idea of how thick they are and how much more room you have to carve it out. Um, I think that really helps. Um, and yeah, um, this will take a lot of time, but it's kind of meditative too. Okay, now that you're done carving out all of the wells, you're just gonna take a little bit of water and smooth out everything. Um, you wanna get inside of the wells, on the side of the paint palette, the bottom, just everything and make it, uh, just kind of touch it up. All right, so we're pretty close to being done with this. I'm just gonna touch up a few of these little spots that you can see here, but for the most part, it's pretty smooth. All right, so here's the back side, and we're just gonna touch that up a little bit. Any of, um, the sides that are uneven, just kind of um, take a good look at everything. All right, so our paint palette is all done. Now we we want to dry it to the bone dry state. I'm gonna put on these little paint sticks here so that I can dry evenly bottom side up because that's gonna get more airflow, but we, we do have a little bit of airflow on the bottom too to help it dry more evenly. Something I also do is put a little plastic tarp over it and that will slow down the drying time and help prevent any cracks from happening. All right, so once your piece is completely dry, then it's ready to go into a bisque fire um, and then you can decorate it with like underglaze or glaze and then you're gonna put it into your glaze fire and then your paint palette will be complete. All right, uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, I love that you guys are here and supporting the channel. Be sure to subscribe so that you know when I release new videos. I'm trying to get some more out that are different than just the stream archive. Um, but be sure to go check me out on Twitch for any live streams, um, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!